The title is uh, Anomalous Heat Generation Experiments Using Metal Nanocomposites and Hydrogen Isotope Gas. Okay. <clears throat> I'd like to talk about the uh, collaborative research, mainly uh, experimental results at the obtained at Tohoku University. And uh, we uh, perform these, using these samples, and uh, we, we observe some uh, anomalous heat generation. Okay. okay, the background is here. Uh, this is uh, objectives and organization of uh, collaborative research proj project uh, in Japan. We started uh, this project in uh, October uh, 2015 to uh, October 2017. So we have not so much time for this project. So we are now uh, uh, persuading, uh, con considering uh, to set up a new uh, national project. And the uh, objective, main objective of this research project is uh, to clarify the existence of the anomalous heat generation phenomenon. Uh, we, we, we have many, much data on anomalous heat generation, but uh, uh, many people still doubt the existence of the anomalous excess heat. So main research of this project is to clarify, to to convince everybody the existence of the anomalous heat generation. And also, uh, we would like to set up a new national project by obtaining a guiding principle on how to control the anomalous heat generation phenomena. So, uh, this is a, we have two objectives uh, for this uh, research project. And this is the uh, organization uh, of this project. We have some universities and uh, uh, companies. Technova is a leader of this project, and uh, uh, Professor Akito Takahashi is a uh, leader of this uh, project. And uh, Technova has, uh, under Technova, Nago University and Kobe University participate in this project. And Nissan Motor Corporation and Kyushu University and uh, Tohoku University. Okay. Uh, this is a summary of uh, uh, experimental results at Tohoku University. Uh, I will uh, describe, uh, explain about these results. But uh, now, uh, this is a summary. We uh, we perform the many type using a many types of samples, mainly a palladium nickel sample. Uh, it is this one is uh, uh, made by melt spinning method, and uh, copper nickel uh, samples and uh, palladium only samples. This one is uh, uh, very small, uh, under four nanometer nano palladium sample, and the other is a copper nickel, and the copper nickel with uh, silica. This one, this one, these. Uh, uh, Kappa nickel with zirconium. And uh, <clears throat> if we look at briefly, we get the uh, uh, excess heat for uh, PNZ4S and CNZ4S. And in the case of CNZ5S, there is a kappa nickel metal spinning sample with zirconia. Uh, we observe the uh, coincident, bus like coincidence increase events of the uh, pressure of the reaction chamber and the gas temperature. I will, will mention about this. And uh, we would like to replicate, replicate uh, this phenomena uh, using this CNZ6 sample. And uh, uh, successfully we replicated coincidence increase events of the pressure of the reaction chamber and gas temperature. Okay, <clears throat> so, uh, and uh, I would like to uh, mention about uh, this one. Uh, if we use uh, palladium only, uh, we did not uh, access any excess heat of at 
elevated the temperature. Okay. So I'd like to explain about uh, our experimental setup briefly. Uh, these uh, these these apparatus are uh, developed uh, based on the uh, Kobe universities, uh, Takashi Akito and Kitamura's uh, apparatus based on that we uh, we make uh, this kind of a very uh, high uh, by high uh, precisely measurement system. The feature of this experimental setup is. Uh, oil flow calorimetry at high temperature. About uh, 300 degrees centigrade, uh, using uh, oil flow calorimetry, we can measure uh, the excess heat using by this method. And second point is uh, a lot of many uh, measurement points. We put the many uh, thermocouples or uh, RTD uh, to uh, make sure that what is happening in this uh, reaction chamber. So uh, we put uh, uh, many uh, some couples. And the third point is uh, uh, resistant to outer temperature fluctuation. Because uh, we have uh, our, our apparatus is in the thermostatic chamber. Uh, it is uh, uh, temperature is kept always, uh, almost uh, always uh, constant. So these are the mm, feature of our experimental setup. So we use uh, oil flow calorimetry method, and also we have many uh, some couples in this reaction chamber and the other points we measure. Okay, this this is the appearance of uh, uh, experimental setup. Uh, this one, uh, in this chamber, we have a reaction chamber about 500 milli uh, milliliter. And uh, this one is a uh, uh, oil fluorocarbonetary method and other chillers and uh, uh, gas provide uh, systems. And uh, we have a uh, thermostatic chamber like this. Okay. So I would like to explain about the sample preparation uh, briefly. Uh, we mainly use uh, melt spinning samples. Melt spinning is uh, uh, like this uh, method: uh, amorphous mixture of metal elements prepared by metal spinning method, like this. And at, uh, this melt spinning process is performed was performed at the Sendai Material Company. And after that, uh, we send this uh, metal spinning material to Kobe University or Nissan, and they uh, make a, uh, formation. They made formation of nanoparticles uh, by oxidization. And this material uh, was divided to uh, two parts. The one is the Kobe University and one is the Tohoku University. And uh, uh, two samples are subjected to the same process. And we will uh, compare the experimental results for the, the whole, for the same samples. Okay. Uh, <coughs> this one is, uh, uh, illustrates uh, excess uh, power evaluation. So we uh, perform the blank run uh, without uh, sample and uh, using the blank run, we can get the uh, uh, recovery rate. Uh, recovery rate by Q, uh, prorate and density and specific heat and the delta T. Delta T is uh, uh, difference, temperature difference between the inlet and outlet of the uh, current, uh, oil current. Okay, and uh, Q is. Uh, Outer heater and inner heater plus excess heat. So we evaluate uh, using this uh, equation. And uh, this is the uh, results of uh, uh, eta value uh, based on the blank run. We can, uh, we can get uh, a reaction recovery rate like this. And, and then excess heat is calculated by the above uh, equations. 
And also, I would like to mention about the error estimation for this uh, measurement. Main uh, error factors, uh, uh, fluctuation of oil flow and uh, temperature measurement, uh, fluctuation of temperature measurement and the fluctuation of uh, power input. Uh, one, uh, number one is the uh, uh, largest uh, among these three factors. And uh, we uh, estimate using this equation, for example, in the case of uh, CNZ5S, uh, we get uh, 0 0.9 watt for 80 watt, uh, 80 watt input, and 22.3 watt for 134 watt input. So a very uh, good system. Okay, so I'd like to uh, talk, uh, explain about the experimental results. Okay, this is the uh, results uh, of uh, a PNZ4S, palladium 0.04 and nickel 0.31 and zirconium 0.65 with D2 gas. In this case, we uh, performed uh, using a D2 gas. Okay. Uh, this is the results of uh, uh, heat release at room temperature. Heat release at room temperature mainly uh, due to the the palladium absorption of D2 gas. And uh, as you can see, we can get the, uh, this uh, power, uh, like uh, uh, ten, maximum power is 10 watt and uh, decrease. And uh, if we uh, evaluate this value, this excess heat, uh, about 54.8 uh, 50, kilojoule per D mole, uh, deuterium mole. Uh, in this case, absorbed deuterium is 1.59 mole. And so uh, we can get uh, 0 0.57 electron volt per uh, deuterium. And uh, this one, this data is uh, obtained at Tohoku University. And uh, at Kobe University, uh, they uh, Kitamura and uh, Takahashi get uh, uh, 54 kilojoule per D and 0.56 electron volt per D. Uh, fairly uh, good uh, agreement like this. Okay. And uh, <coughs> this one is uh, excess heat generation, uh, in this case, PNZ4S with D2 gas. As I've shown, uh, we get the uh, uh, small amount of uh, uh, excess is like that. But this one is mainly by chemical reaction. So in the, uh, this region, 87 kilojoule. But uh, if we increase up uh, the uh, temperature of the reaction chamber, about uh, 160 to 200 degrees centigrade, uh, we can get uh, excess heat like this. Uh, this excess heat is evaluated by the uh, temperature difference between the uh, inlet and outlet uh, of uh, oil coolant, okay? And uh, in this case, if we uh, provide 80 watt, we got uh, uh, 0 0.65 megajoule like this. And uh, if we uh, increase up the temperature of the reaction chamber, we get uh, uh, 1.73 megajoule like this. So integrated excess heat in this case is about uh, 2.47 megajoule, and uh, at least uh, we can get 14.9 uh, electron volt per uh, deuterium. So this value uh, cannot explain by chemical reactions. Okay, next, next data, uh, this is uh, results of uh, uh, copper nickel zirconium, copper 0.04, nickel 0.31, zirconium 0.65 with hydrogen gas in this case. Uh, this is the overview of CNZ5S experiment. Uh, at the beginning, we performed the blank run. Uh, th these data are RTD's results. RTD is a uh, 
is uh, located like this. RTD1 and RTD2 and RTD3 and RTD4 like this. And uh, blank run, uh, you, blank run, during blank run, we have only uh, uh, bees, uh, zirconia bees uh, in this uh, reaction chamber. And uh, we get the blank run data, and after that baking, uh, we put the sample uh, CNZ5S sample, copper nickel sample, about 100 gram, and we uh, we put the hydrogen gas into the reaction chamber. Uh, it's a, a CNZ5S4 gland run. Okay. So <coughs> this is a comparison uh, of RTD and E1 uh, uh, temperature. So blank run. This is a blank run data. And uh, baking, and uh, this is a uh, foie gland run data. If we look at uh, uh, compare the uh, temperature of uh, RTD1 and RTD2 and RTD3 and RTD4 and uh, E1, at top of the flange of the reaction chamber, uh, we can see that the temperature increase uh, at the uh, RTD3 and RTD4 and E1. Uh, lower side, we, we could not uh, detect uh, any change of the uh, temperature, but the uh, upper side, we can see the uh, difference uh, uh, between the blank run and foreground run, like this. Okay? And uh, these are the results of. Uh, uh, fluctuation of pressure of reaction chamber. Uh, reaction chamber uh, pressure is here. Reaction chamber's pressure and also uh, E2, this place. E2 pipe, E2 gas temperature is plotted. Uh, as you can see, uh, during the blank run and ba uh, baking run, uh, we do not, uh, these Press, uh, pressure and uh, E2 temperature uh, stable, but uh, uh, if we start, if we start for a run uh, with uh, CNZ5S with hydrogen gas, we can see uh, the fluctuation like this, uh, fluctuation of uh, E2 gas, E2 temperature and pressure, and if we, if we enlarge this data. Uh, we can see like this as uh, bus like uh, constant increase and uh, time scale enlarged uh, data is here. The pressure is a red line and uh, uh, temperature is a blue line. Uh, as you can see, coincidentally, uh, pressure increased up uh, and the E2 temperature increased up like this. So, if we enlarge more and more uh, time scale, enlarge, we can see that the uh, uh, pressure and the temperature uh, goes up and down like this, coincidentally. So, this uh, phenomena uh, suggests that the generation or very high uh, temperature gas is uh, generated upper side at upper upper side, and uh, uh, we get the pressure increase and the temperature around here's increase maybe. Okay, uh, based on the uh, oil flow calorimetry, we can estimate the uh, excess heat generation for this sample. Okay. Uh, and if we provide 80 watt, uh, we can get uh, about of 5 watt like this. And uh, this one is uh, uh, estimated error, uh, standard deviation. So we can see that uh, 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 significant excess heat generation uh, for this sample. And uh, uh, we can we can estimate the chemical reaction uh, in this system. And the most largest one is uh, hydrogen combustion. But uh, if, 
if uh, we have also, of course, we have no oxygen, large oxygen, but uh, if a combustion uh, heat released, uh, 121 kilojoule power more age. But uh, for this case, we can calculate the uh, 6.5 megajoule bar per mole hydrogen. So uh, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, explain by known chemical reactions. Okay, and uh, this one, this figure shows uh, uh, broken zirconia beads after excess heat release. As I say, uh, metal, uh, spinning composite samples about uh, 100 uh, grams, like that. And uh, zirconium O2 bees is feed for a filler. Uh, the uh, diameter of the bees is one millimeter. And uh, after exp experiment, the sample is sieved out to separate from zirconia bees but uh, we found that the, some broken parts of zirconia bees like this, uh, mixed with the uh, metal nano composite sample. So it, uh, it suggests that the very large local heat stress was loaded on the uh, zirconia bees. Uh, this, is a, uh, it, this result supported the exist existence of uh, excess heat generation. Maybe uh, chemical reaction cannot this <laughs> like this. Okay, okay, okay. The next one, next one is uh, results of uh, palladium sample only. Palladium only. Okay, what's D two gas? Okay, nano palladium embedded in um, mesopolar silica. Mesopolar silica is uh, like this, and uh, this one have a small hole like this. And uh, Nagoya University's uh, researcher, uh, Dr. Hiyoki, uh, made the sample, uh, palladium sample, put into this uh, mesopolar circle like this. And uh, he made uh, 100, about 100 uh, gram uh, for nano palladium embed, embedded mesopolar circle like this. So we, you, uh, we made an experiment using this sample. Uh, this is the results of uh, for the uh, mesopolar silica uh, case uh, excess heat we uh, we did not uh, no we did not any excess heat for this sample uh, this uh, data this one is a blank run and uh, this one is a for a grant run and uh, uh, blue line blue line means a heater input so we change the heater input 40 watt and uh, 60 watt and like this but uh, and the uh, uh, red one is a, means a delta T. So we cannot see any difference between the delta T for a blank run and the elevated uh, for a grand run. So we cannot see no excess heat for uh, PN, PSN1, radium only. Okay. At the elevated temperature, of course, room temperature we have uh, uh, some uh, ex uh, some heat, but uh, it is very difficult to distinguish the uh, chemical reaction and the nuclear reaction. Okay. Okay. Next one. In this case, uh, we use the uh, uh, copper, uh, uh, copper and uh, nickel, and uh, in this case we use uh, silica, silica SiO2 case. Uh, CNS3 case, we also uh, observe the excess heat at elevated temperature. Uh, these are room temperature, and uh, if we uh, uh, make a, a temperature about 150 and 250 degrees, we get uh, uh, two uh, watt or like that. And if we increase up the temperature, we get the larger excess heat, and uh, we got like this. And uh, we change the gas, uh, hydrogen gas to deuterium gas. We did not, <laughs> we did not any excess heat. So um, about the isotopic effect uh, for this phenomena, uh, we cannot uh, say, uh, we cannot conclude, solid conclusion, 
but uh, in this case, mm, we cannot uh, observe for D2 gas. And in this case, a generated energy is about 10.7 uh, megajoule per mole hydrogen. Okay. This is the last uh, sample. So as I said, uh, we measure, uh, we observe the bus-like coincident increase events similar to uh, uh, like this. Gas uh, pressure and uh, E2 temperature uh, increase up coincidentally like this. And uh, this one, in this case, we uh, measured uh, the E2 gas increase and the pres uh, pressure increase like this. Yeah, so bus like, oh, bus -like coincident uh, increase events uh, similar to CNZ5S were observed. Okay, so if we look at the uh, enlarged uh, time scale, uh, pressure of the reaction chamber uh, is like this, and also uh, E2, pipe temperature corresponding to gas temperature, like this. Uh, so we can s we can we we can uh, we can see say that the uh, hot gas release like this, and the pressure is increased and the temperature was increased like this, okay. Okay, so I'd like to conclude. Anomalous excess heat generations were observed for all the samples at elevated temperature, uh, except for the Palladian nanoparticles embedded in mesopolar silica. Integrated excess heat reached more than several megajoule, uh, which could not uh, be explained by any a known chemical process. Coincident bus like increased events of the pressure of reaction chamber and gas temperature, which suggested sudden energy release in the reaction chamber, were observed many times for experiment using the copper and nickel zirconia sample. These bus like events were replicated during the exper experiment using the same composition sample. Uh, CNZ uh, success. Uh, qualitative re reproducibility between Kobe and the Tohoku University uh, experience was good. And uh, lastly, I would like to acknowledge these uh, people, uh, Pukin Planet and uh, Tohoku University. Thank you for attention.